Cheers. And the meeting is now being recorded, by the way. So again, my name is Scott Ford. I'm one of the family camp directors. With me today are Sean. Well, you know, Sean, introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Sean McQuaid. I am one of the program directors here for Family Camp. How are you all doing this evening? Good. Good. <laughs> right. And then we have Kevin Reynos. Kevin, where are you at? Me? I'm hiding at work, but uh, I'm one of the admin directors for Family Camp. Welcome. All right, Kevin, could you start us off here just by talking about the mission? So we're going to steal the change. There we go. Kevin, you're up. Oh, sure. Okay. Actually, there's a lot of words in the screen. So as um, PDF slides go, we don't necessarily want to read over everything on that. So I'm going to paraphrase. But basically, um, several years ago, myself and a friend of mine took over family camp right after the PTEC merger. And I had just gone through some lovely wood badge training. Um, I highly recommend that to everyone. And one of the things to, in order to make sure you have your goals and achieve them is make sure you have your mission and focus first. So um, we have a vision of family camp to increase uh, participation in the Scouts BSA program. But in order to achieve that, we want to do that by providing a fun, safe, um, limited amount of hassle experience for Cub Scouts families and new campers. So um, we have a unique position at BETS to be able to provide um, awesome programming throughout the weekend, uh, dietary and food service in a um, dining hall and flushable toilets, which is always nice to, to break people into the outdoor camping experience. So um, we want you guys to have a fun time. Uh, we want you guys to learn that outdoor camping as a part of the BSA is something that's really awesome and we should uh, continue to promote and hopefully have you guys participate in. Kevin, why don't you take the first few slides here, and then we can kind of pass it okay. around. Sure. Obviously, I, if most of you are attending, hopefully you have already registered. We have five sessions this year as the last several years. The first one being in June 28th through the 30th. That's the last weekend in June. We will be taking off the weekend of July uh, that is following the 4th of July. We typically uh, don't do those, and we haven't had that in a couple of years. We're back to that break. Then we have the next four sessions, which is July 12th, 19th, 26th, and a final one in August. Currently, sessions two, four, and or sessions two, three, and five are completely full and have no space left. There is a couple spots potentially in wait list for session four, and we do have space in session one. So if you are already signed up, and if you are going session one and know other people in your unit that may want to join you, you can always help promote and say, hey, there's still spots available if the uh, June date would work for anyone else. Um, word of mouth is our best advertising. Now, the council does a lot of good work for us, but it's really the families that experience the camp and come back and tell others um, about this is how we get our people. So uh, we do have still some session one stuff left, but uh, if you have any questions, you can let us know at the end, okay? All right, we can get started a little bit on what to expect. So just as a reminder, camp runs on Chicago time. Don't listen to your phone. Don't listen to your car if it changes. We run on Chicago time, not Eastern time. Not a big deal, but we do that so that because we know a vast majority of our folks come from Chicago. We don't want to get folks confused. The biggest thing we got to remind everybody when you're coming to camp is please bring the your medical forms. Part A, B1, B2, and a copy front and back of your insurance card. We will be looking for those right away when you walk in and get registered, which we'll talk more about in a moment. But you're not going to get past the registration process without those medical forms. You have extra on hand that are blank for you to sit there and fill out, but there's nothing worse than getting to camp and having to go and fill out all these medical forms while your kid's sitting there getting antsy and like, oh, I want to go do stuff. We know. Do it in advance. We will make sure that we send reminders with links. Um, next few weeks, just a reminder to print it out and bring it with you. Um, there will be no meal provided on Friday. We will have snacks. Generally, it's some uh, big old bowls of popcorn, some uh, drinks, bug juice, whatever you want to call it. And then the trading post is open. The trading post will have candy, pop, and ice cream. 
just to quickly interject, I know some of our participants who may be new viewing may have registered with their PAC. If your PAC is going to coordinate your health forms, please let your um, coordinator know. We'd rather have them up earlier than later. If they're one of the first ones there, we'll have everything on hand. We do not accept any medical forms emailed or electronically sent to us. That is too risky for a health and HIPAA um, security standpoint. So that's why we still do the old paper copy. Distinctly old school. And again, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat and we'll answer them as we see them. So our participants, our families, are going to get broken out into six color groups. And you will follow that group throughout the, your group will kind of follow throughout the, uh, the schedule throughout the weekend. And you're going to move through six different activity areas all throughout our beautiful camp. And you are expected to stay and be engaged with that group. We try to ask our adults not to just let the scouts go run and go take a nap during session, hang with them, have fun with them. Um, if you're up at uh, at the range for BBs or archery or slingshot, don't worry, you'll get a chance to, to shoot some as well towards the end after the scouts get tired of it. On Sunday, when we all, when y'all depart, we have to clean up camp. So please do us a favor and remember that a scout is clean. If you have any questions about that, let us know. Something as simple as pick up your trash, do a, a do a line and uh, walk your campsite, make sure you get all the trash picked up, leave all the big things by the garbage can. Simple stuff that does a huge help for us who are trying to get out of there on Sunday too. Safety. Sean, can you talk safety for a second? All right. Well, when everyone gets to camp, we're going to be giving you our camp shirt for that weekend. That camp, uh, that shirt is to be worn by everyone on Saturday. So that way we know who is supposed to be in camp and who isn't. It's a good safety measure that everyone's wearing the staff. I'm sorry, the camp shirt while staff has our own shirts as well. Um, we ask for your safety that you remain on the trails and that also that you stay in the camp areas. Um, in the camp, there is a lot of poison ivy. That's why we ask that you stay on the camp trails. And the camp has borders to it, but however, we have neighboring farmers, so we don't want anybody wandering onto somebody else's property. One of the things we always ask for at camp too is everyone wears closed toed shoes. No sandals, no flip flops, anything like that. Um, this again is another safety issue down by the waterfront. We ask for water shoes as well. Um, we wanna make sure everyone is safe at all times. And then um, we do an additional safety briefing on Friday night when you come up to camp. Once you get to camp and you register, we do a closing flag ceremony for that day. And we go over a lot of the rules and regulations about the camp. And we just, you know, if you may have heard it already, that's fine, but it's a good refresher as well. Hey, Sean, what about Crocs? Do those count? Uh, they are closed toed. Technically, they're okay, especially on the waterfront, they're fine. Um, me personally, I don't like them. But uh, really, if you have more of a closed toe shoe, we really appreciate that. From experience, though, Crocs not in sport mode slip off and they tend to may drift down in our lake current. So having something that's affixed, strapped, or tied is more appropriate. All right. And Sean. as some of you may have seen, we had Mr. Lenny just sign in with us. Um, he will be swimming down the river, re um, recovering your Crocs as they float down like Chapin. <laughs> so save him some time. Make sure you have on good secure shoes or boat shoes. All right, Sean, let's uh, handle the what you should bring, what you should not bring to camp. Sure. <laughs> One of the things we do at this camp is we want to make sure you guys have a great camping experience. And we take care of a lot of the program for you, and we take care of a lot of the food for you, but you still have to bring a few different things. Primarily, bring a tent, a tent for the whole family so everyone can fit into it. Um, you don't have to bring the country club tent, those you know 20 by 30 tents. Make sure it's enough because you're going to be sharing campsites with a lot of other people. We want to make sure everyone fits in the campsite. Uh, there are a lot of bugs at camp, especially the mosquitoes, so make sure you do bring some bug spray. We're going to be outside all day Saturday, so make sure you have sunscreen. Now, we do have a trading post. Mr. Scott is a big proponent of our trading post, so make sure you bring cash or credit or debit cards for the trading post. He'll have lots of merchandise for you guys this year. 
Um, we do provide a campfire um, ring in each campsite, so you may want to bring things for that. We have plenty of firewood there for you, but if you want to be roasting marshmallows, you can bring uh, campfire forks or any other type of cooking equipment that you may want to bring. Now, as an individual, what do you need to bring? Well, sleeping bag. Definitely want to sleep in a sleeping bag, a sleeping pad for comfort or air mattress, um, towel for the waterfront. Make sure you have clothes enough for three days. Granted, you may only be up there two days, but you never know with weather. We've seen a lot of people get rained out, so make sure you have plenty of clothes. In case, I know it never rains at Camp Bats. It's always liquid sunshine or a heavy dew. But if you get a heavy dew in your tent, you may want to make sure that you have plenty of extra clothing. <laughs> uh, make sure you bring swim swimmer. Um, we do a lot of stuff on the waterfront. That is going to be part of your day, so make sure you do have that. Extra socks, always good to have in camp. You're going to do a lot of walking all over camp. Um, a reusable water bottle. Now, we will have water at all of our stations and throughout the camp, and also at our meals, we provide plenty of drinks. Um, you can refill water, bug juice, things like that at the meals, but at all our stations have water. So bring a water bottle. Remember, stay hydrated. Bring a chair in the campsites. When you're sitting around that campfire, there are a few logs around those campsites, but you probably will be a little bit more comfortable if you do have one of those chairs. Hats, like I said, with sunscreen, you're going to be out in the sun all day, so make sure you have a hat for your protection. And it does get dark at Camp Bets, so bring a flashlight for your evening. And like we said, it never rains at Camp Bets, but just in case, bring some heavy dew gear or rain gear, whatever they call it. It's kind of hard to find liquid sunshine gear, but However they call it, make sure you bring something because a scout is always prepared. Now, what shouldn't you bring? Well, we do have a lot of things that you shouldn't bring, and this is for your own safety as well. No firearms at camp. We do have a range at camp, and we do have the scouts with archery as well as BB guns and slingshots. We will provide that for you. So do not bring any firearms with you at all. So no firearms, no bows, no crossbows, no arrows, no slingshots, or any kind of large sheathed knives. All right. Make sure no weapons of any kind. Uh, make sure there are no alcoholic beverages. Remember, this is scout property, and alcohol is not allowed on scout property. To go along with that, no drugs of any type, fireworks of any kind, because it is a forest area that we are in and fires can start. So for your safety, no fireworks. Now, I know everyone loves their family pet and Fido is the friendliest that he is to everybody. But for everyone's safety, no pets at camp. We do have a lot of wildlife around there. There are squirrels, raccoons, turtles, things like that. You can see plenty of wildlife. But please don't bring the family dog. You might have them chasing them all over camp, or you might even scare somebody who doesn't like dogs. No generators. You don't need a generator, but on camp, we do have electricity in all the campsites. So if you have a CPAP machine or anything like that, there's electricity at each site, so you don't need to bring a generator to have that taken care of. Also, remember the camp, uh, however, it is a pretty big camp. We are in close quarters with everyone else, so no loud radios. Please respect everyone. So we don't want loud music at one campsite while another campsite might be trying to sleep. All right. Uh, well, you mentioned that. <laughs> Talk about our the official camp bird, plant, and animal. Official... Camp bird is the mosquito. You will have plenty of them in beautiful Southwest Michigan. Like uh, Sean mentioned, please bring bug spray. Please apply it often, um, particularly at dawn and dusk. Go along with that. Ticks are a problem. They will always be a problem. Um, thankfully, your bug spray is also a tick repellent. But if you do have some, uh, like a picadin or some of the one of those treatments that you can put on your shoes, very helpful as well. And poison ivy. That is that is the biggest reminder for all of our scouts is that poison ivy is directly off the trail. We cut the trails back as best we can, but if a scout is going to go chase a ball into the into the woods at all, they're going to end up running the poison ivy, and we'll be helping them out at the medical uh, medical building afterwards. Please just be aware. Make sure your scouts are aware. We'll remind you again on Friday and Saturday, and maybe Sunday too. Just make sure that we're just all aware of what's out there. Not a big deal, but just be safe. All right. Where am I going? Well, Camp Pets is in Berrien Springs, Michigan, right off Snow Road. 
you'll see the nice little sign out front. And then when you turn in, you're going to come down this roadway here and you're going to end up parking and then going down the pine tree. We'll talk a little more about this in one moment. We're just going to talk a little bit about a few of the things that are going on. Our program areas are on the north and south end of camp. Shooting sports is in the far north. The entrance shelter is where we're going to have uh, handicraft, or sorry, um, handicraft, handicraft. One of, one one of our the, handicraft projects. Sure. Uh, and then down south by some Thunderbird will be the other, the real handicraft. And then that's also where our aquatics area is. The nice part is, depending on which group you're in, you're going to either be down south in the morning and up north in the afternoon or vice versa, making it that you're not going back and forth. This isn't like college or those really big high schools we have here. There are three kind of main gathering areas. Gilwell Field, right outside Pine Trees, where we'll have flags to start and end our day. Thunderbird Dining Hall is down south. That's we're going to eat, obviously. And then there's the Fire Bowl, which we'll walk to Saturday night from Gilwell Field. We also, we're going to call three main facilities. You read the email. We talked about Peace Pony, unlimited hot water, wonderful flushing toilets. Down south, we have War Horse. A little more rustic. Very rustic compared to uh, the beauty of Peace Pony. And then also right outside Gilwell Field is our health lodge. So if there's ever an issue, we, we have a medical officer on camp at all times. If they're not there, we have a radio for you to call it in and say you need our health officer to come back to the health lodge. All right, check-in process. Map on the left, Google Maps on the right. You can tell us from me because I got a little heart for camp vets. So you turn off Snow Road, we go down, we park. We leave our stuff in the car. Don't bring it with, because the first thing you have to do is you have to follow this curvy road right around the corner to the Pine Tree Cabin where you'll check in. Pine Tree looks like this. There'll be a few folks standing around probably. There'll probably be a couple of golf carts there just like that. You'll walk into Pine Tree. You'll go through the check-in process where you hand us your medical forms. We check you on the list. We tell you what campsite, what color group you are. You'll get shirts. You'll get a wristband. And then you'll exit out the side door and get your cup where we're going to request you write your name on it right away because the lost cup pile that we end up with at every meal is usually substantial. And we want to make sure the cups get back to their owners. We'll do more about the check-in process a little later on in kind of those weekly emails we send, just as a reminder, hoping that we could do a quick video too while I'm out there in a few weeks, just to let you know how this goes. When you're done with Pine Tree and you're all checked in, go back to your car. In the parking lot, there's a little shelter full of wheelbarrows to help get your stuff and your gear to your campsite. And we'll have plenty of friendly volunteers to help guide you to where your campsite is. And we'll have more signage this year as well. All right, Kevin, can you start talking about the weekend schedule? Sure. Uh, we have a overview and um, we tend to try keeping as much to this as possible. Obviously, if everything works perfectly, we'll be hitting these times exactly on the nose but anyone who's an experienced scouter knows we operate on scout time. So depending on the needs of the day, we may have to adjust a little bit. But Friday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, the camp opens. If you are here earlier, we've actually had people queue up and start blocking Snow Road. We do ask if, if the entrance is currently full, that maybe we go down the road a little bit, head into town from it, and come on back in because we do not want to have any traffic hazards. But we open the gates probably at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Up until then, we are still running around camp making preparations. So having people come in earlier than that is a risk and a hazard to us, and we can't effectively be safe. So right. 4 right. Check in. If they do we'll come open. in, we'll have them cleaning the bathroom. Not saying, yeah. just saying. All right. So from 4, 4.30 to 7 p.m., you guys are welcome to check in, set your campsite up. We will be calling you back to Gilwell Field at 7 p.m. for our flag and our orientation. And at 8 o'clock-ish, we'll have you guys, if you guys, and this is one of those come and go, if you will, so it's not strictly required, but we'll be putting on a spy-themed movie. There is a plethora to choose from. We are still wrestling with the idea. So, but we will have a fun movie for you guys to come down and come and go, if you please, with snacks and drinks. 
Um, that also gets you down to the southern end of the camp, so you're familiar where our Thunderbird Dining Hall and our handicraft area is at. Um, after the movie, we ask that you guys return back to your uh, campsites, and that at 10 o'clock p.m. is quiet times and hard lights out is 11, because we'll be up and going pretty early in the morning. Now, as we do not provide a meal, either you guys can stop and bring uh, stop on the way in, uh, bring something to eat in the car ride, some PACs as an organization will bring some food to make in camp or deli type of stuff. If you need to arrive, get your information, but then that night, maybe sneak out real quick for a bite to eat, you're welcome to do so. That we do ask though, you're back in camp before that 10 o'clock time where we go and uh, we will lock the gates, but we're not actually not locking the gate. We just don't want anyone wandering off the street. So we will be closing camp again for the night. It is not permanently locked. So in case of emergency, we can get people in and out, but um, we don't want anyone turning in accidentally after hours. Um, Saturday is our program day, so we'll actually have any late check-ins. So if some reason um, something doesn't work out, it is a long drive, or I know some people plan on doing this, you can come up the day Saturday morning. You don't necessarily have to be Friday. Um, we do ask that you check in between 6.30 and 8.30 a.m. for our Saturday late check-in. We will be doing our opening flags at 7, followed by breakfast. So if you come at 8.30, you're pretty much missing two things of the day already. Uh, but we do understand that sometimes things need to happen in order to participate. There is no penalty <laughs> for that. We just ask that you do be in camp before or 8.30 so that we can go back to doing our program rotations and have fun that day. In which you see 8.45, we'll be rotating through three stations in the morning. We have six stations overall, followed by a lunch and our afternoon sessions, followed by dinner. And after dinner, we'll, we'll be preparing for our closing flags and our campfire. Um, which we'll have at our fire bowl at 8. Then if you do need to leave for the night, some people come and have to leave. They have plans on a Sunday morning. They have other things they got to get to. Um, we do ask that you check out. Anytime that you're in camp after Friday, gate close. We need to know if you guys leave campus, okay? So we don't, We hopefully that we, we have everything you need. You don't need to leave camp during the day on Saturday, but we do need to know who's in camp just in case there is emergency protocol potentially some weather issues. I need to have an accurate head count. You need to check out with someone to make sure we know that you're not in camp anymore. That is a very important national camp school security protocol that all, everyone in the BSA follows. Um, then again, with the lights and the, the quiet time and lights out and that campfire time, we may be bringing some snacks for you guys after the, uh, the campfire. So if you're gonna bring some campfire snacks, it's more of a Friday thing or supplement what we get you on a Saturday. And then Sunday is our light morning. We do want to model a lot of our scout oath and law. So we do have uh, opening flags, breakfast, followed by scout vesting. What's scout vesting? It is a non-denominational reflection period. It's no more than 15 minutes down in our lovely chapel because we want to encourage the reverent part of the scout law. We do ask that you pack up and clean up your campsites and that we close at 1030 so that all our lovely volunteer staff, which we all are, can clean up and return to our families once again for the weekend. Now, like I said, we like to model things. Um, class A's, we talk about equipment, are not strictly, or sorry, we call them field uniforms now, are not strictly necessary for everyone. But we do ask if you have them and you want to bring them, you can because we do want to model a dinner um, session with our class A's on or field uniforms. And if the youth have them, they have the opportunity at the Saturday night and Sunday morning flag ceremonies to help participate. And we ask that they wear those field uniforms for that. And that takes us through our schedule. So we can kind of quickly just pop through this real quick because I think Kevin talked did a good talk. I also want to point out Kevin in the uh, was it the King King Kevin year for the uh, uh. Knights of Vets there. So this is our kind of our 6 a.m. gathering on Friday or 6 a.m. Oh, 7 p.m. And then Saturday, I just like showing this because it's got a good picture of uh, food and all of our color groups lined up ready to eat. I think one of those changes we are going to make this year instead of having everybody stand up in line and wait in the blinding hot sun, we're going to say, hey, these color groups come up, everybody else go have a seat. And then we'll call you up. And that way, folks can sit down, relax, and enjoy the beauty of camp and probably the screaming of cicadas. Yeah. 
And then again, a, a fantastic br uh, breakfast. Love me some biscuits and gravy. And then we just wanted to show our picture of our chapel that looks out over beautiful Lake Chapin. They're in Scout Vespers. All right, Sean, let's talk about program. You can talk about the southern end of the program rotation. Certainly. Like Scott said, we have uh, two different program areas, the north side and the south side of camp. Um, we're going to talk about the south side program, which is going to be primarily our waterfronts. Um, down at our waterfront, we have a lovely program at Lake Champion on the river. And what we do there is two different waterfront programs. The first one is going to be swimming, swimming, or as Kevin likes to say, splashy, splashy. Um, we get our scouts, we give them safety talks about um, water safety, and then they have a lot of time to get into the water. Parents, you are more than welcome to join them as well. If not, you're welcome to sit on the dock or sit on the um, lakeside and just watch them and enjoy um, after that program, we will have our boating program. Um, we, what we do is we have everyone set off in canoes. Now you're worried about canoes being flippy or anything like that. What we do is we modify our canoes. So we have two canoes together. So it's more like a pontoon. They will not flip over. This way it's a lot safer for everybody. We do have our program with safety um, vests that everyone gets to wear. So we make sure that we have lifeguards on duty and we also have lifeguards in kayaks out on the water as well, making sure everyone is safe and having a great time. Um, we have a lot of fun on the water, but it is called the waterfront. So we want to let you know you will get wet. You have a good time. You're going to get wet. You're going to have a great time. And maybe you'll get the staff wet or the staff will get you wet too. After that, our third area is going to be up the hill across from the uh, Thunderbird Dining Hall, which is our handicraft area and our, our Gaga Ball Pit. Our handicraft area, we will be having scouts make a project up there. Um, the project will be themed to what our camp theme is this year with the spy agency. And then with, if there is any more time, we are going to have some Gaga Ball competition. If you don't know what Gaga Ball is, oh my goodness, where have you been? This is the scout sport that is sweeping the nation. It's basically a modified form of kickball in an octagon of death. No, no, no death. Uh, but it's a really good time. Everybody has a blast. Our staff loves getting in with it with the kids. The kids love it. Parents even have fun watching it, too. Um, we have a nice area set up for our Gaga Ball Pit, and we have some tables around there, too, so everyone can sit and watch as well. And that's it for the South program. All right, for the North program is where we have our shooting sports area. Uh, last year, we we separated archery and slingshot. This year, we're going to bring it together and see how that goes. A little experimentation here. So we'll have archery and slingshot. We will also have BB guns. And then as part of that rotation, you'll go to that front area and we'll do leather work. And then if you've never been to camp before, you will get your very own stave. They'll also get a wood burned stamp with camp bets on it. And if you have been to camp before, please bring your stave back and bring it to camp. And it's amazing to see some of these, you know, weeblos who have been coming to camp since they were little lions and they have all the little leather, little leather rounds hanging off their stave from all these years coming to camp. It's very cool. Um, that is the nice part about all of this is that they're all very much next to each other. The walk from archery to BBs is about 20 feet and the walk from BBs to the leather work is maybe a hundred yards. And you're an eye shot of the bathroom if you need to take a quick break. Campfire program. I had to put this picture on the bottom in because it was the visible bench instead of the invisible bench <laughs> because we have very interesting uh, staff, <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> um, so our campfire program closes out our our Saturday. It is a lot of fun. We sing songs. We invite all of our color groups to choose a skit where they act out a joke or they act out a little mini play or sing a song. And our staff does songs. We have run-ons. It's a lot of fun. And the kids, I, I I can think back to my own pack. And there were kids that were terrified to go up there as tigers. 
But by the time they were Weeblos and AOLs, they were leading the group. And it was so cool to see that development over those years. So if your kid goes up there and he's like, mm, he or she is like, mm, it's cool. Give them time. They'll come back next year. It'll be cool. It'll be more fun. I'm also bringing a cheater little mini book of some skits and songs. So if people are, are wondering what to do, I will help them out. We will tell you about this on Friday. We will tell us again um, to you again on Saturday. But we'll have a little more time in our schedule, hopefully more time to practice and just remind our little scouts that they need to be extra loud. And we've heard them be extra loud all day. So they just need to bring that energy with to the campfire program. Sean, did I miss anything? Nope. Uh, campfire program is really a lot of fun. What we try and do for this entire weekend is give you the full scouting experience. And of course, it always ends with the campfire. So we want everyone to participate. We want everyone to have a good time. We're going to have you standing and sitting and singing and jumping and laughing. So please think of some great skits, think of some fun songs and be part of it with us. <clears throat> Well, it's okay, because I know a song that gets on everybody's nerves. So do I. <laughs> All right. You may not want to start singing that, because I do see Mr. Lenny is in the room, and he could start singing it for us right now. Very fair. All right, Kevin, why don't you take us home? Uh, just quick, there were some questions in the chat. Uh, one thing was about um, dietary. So there is, um, I, we didn't have a slide specifically for it, but if you have any concerns about your dietary, um, First of all, your registration has a spot for it. If you register as a group and you're concerned maybe the PAC didn't register with your allergy per se, please reach out to us at ptac.bets.familycamp, all one word, at Gmail. It's also entered in the chat. It's also on our events page as a contact. It's also, I think, on this page in the underline in the middle to the right-hand side. Feel free to reach out to us. We have our head um, chef, our food service guru, um, extraordinaire Miss Darlene for the weekends already have the menus planned and has already talked to and discussed any concerns with a few different participants. Um, essentially, we always have options. There's not one single thing for food. In the course, there's probably six or seven choices between one or two mains, one or two side dishes, one or two desserts. So there's always uh, salads and veggies and meats and proteins, all different styles, and it's not just one thing. Um, it's very difficult to appease everyone, but we do make our best effort in giving a variety. And I think that's one of our strength, strengths overall as all the camps locally, and some of us older scouters who've been with the Scouts BSA program at summer camp can attest, Bets is one of the best places for food. So um, hopefully you'll be pleasantly surprised. If, like I said, if there are any concerns, please reach out to us. Um, we will work with you on any accommodations as much as we can. So. Um, and as for the deep hatred of boiled hot dogs, um, we may have a meal with hot dogs, but I'm guessing there's probably going to be a hamburger or something else with it as a main, you know, and so we don't generally have one main course. We generally try varying our options up a little bit. So, um, for us at the end here, like I said, there's a context. This is my eighth year of doing programs. Sean, I roped in a couple of years ago. Scott's been with us for a few years. Uh, Ms. Shelby is our professional who is um, helping us run this for a from the standpoint of the camp. So please feel free to reach out to any of us with any questions. As the admin guy who's been working with a lot of the registrants, if you haven't made your payment yet, you are beyond the late fee time. If you are a larger group or something happened, please reach out to me. I am not going to be able to work with you after Friday on any of the late freeze if you haven't taken care of your payments yet. So please, please, please make sure that that happens. Um, we do have our colored shirts. Um, actually, some of those things are popping up in our question and answer. I do think we are no problem jumping into the question and answer. If you guys are, um, anything else you guys need to say, Sean or, or Super Spice Scott? Nope, just wanna put this QR code for the participant guide up here for a second that is shared in the kind of weekly emails we send out i think we have like one slide left oh any questions yeah there we go there we go oh. it's not that bad no seriously it seems like a lot trust us not that bad okay so we did have a question under health forms from earlier um 
if they were turned in already, do we need to bring them again? I'm not sure what you mean by turned in because I have not received any because we're not at a camp. If you mean you've turned it into your unit and your unit's collecting them, then you don't necessarily need to bring your own copy if they're coordinating it as a unit. If you're not sure about that, please reach out to the, your PAC leadership who registered you or coordinated this and make sure that they have a copy. It will never be, with the, the model be prepared, it'll never be a bad thing to have your own copy. I always make a copy of mine and store it and print another one out every time just to make sure. I'm not filling those in several times a year. I do it once and just print out another copy. Um, we also talked about shirt sizes. The largest shirt participant size is 4XL. Um, it should have been put in your registration so we know your sizes already. Um, our, we may have more limited sizes up to maybe 3X in our trading post. Um, the prices for the larger shirts get exponentially more expensive, and we don't want to be sitting on the tent size ones for someone like myself more than a couple shirts. We may only have a handful uh, ordered. Um, talking about flag ceremonies, our staff provide, our youth staff actually in particular, provide the flag ceremonies on Friday and Saturday, and we'll, Saturday morning, we will be taking youth from the participant group and having a teaching moment to have them do our flags lowering on Friday or Saturday and are raising on Sunday. So we don't need any volunteers per se. We don't need anyone to coordinate that. That's part of our experience is letting the youth scouts, those Cub Scouts and their siblings, if they have a uniform. And if you have a Girl Scout or an international scout, which we have two of joining us, and you bring your appropriate uniforms as your field uniform to class A, you're welcome to participate as well. Um, I think we said we'll be sharing our slides afterwards as a follow-up email. Um, we will also be having this video um, saved and posted on our website through the link to a YouTube or something like that. Council will take care of that shortly. Um, so there's a question about uh, kids and families or if kids need to skip an activity if they need a break. Yes. Yeah. But we, have, we do have a lot of younger scouts or younger siblings. It is okay for you to go back to your campsite to take a nap. We do ask if you're feeling faint or a heat stroke, we check in with our medical officer. We don't want you going back to your tent with potential heat issues, but um, we do ask that you let your group know so that if we go by or stop by an area and, and, and something's going on and we need you, we need to know where you're at. So someone in your group should know you guys are heading back to camp to take a nap for a session. A lot of times we have those three or four year old siblings that take a nap with mom or dad while the older sibling and the other parent is our guardian is, is at a different session. We do ask though you say in camp or the camp sites though. Um, life jackets we provide. Some of us are a little bit bigger. I have my own, but we have sizes from small kids, three-year-olds to the big guys like myself and Sean. So you don't really need to supply your own jackets. We have those for you. Um, we talked about the food variety. Um, cicadas, especially bad. It actually depends where you're at. My Family lives in Beverly in Chicago, and 17 years ago, you couldn't walk across the ground without crunching them, and there's like a third or less of them than they are this year. Um, actually, I'm not sure if someone's been up there recently. I really don't know how bad Michigan is. So once again, it's an experience. <laughs> um, recommended bug spray, um, non-aerosol. The scouts in general kind of shy away from the aerosol. We do recommend pump stuff. Um, I've seen anyone do natural remedies to the 100% DEET. It really depends on your body chemistry and type. I don't think we have a preferred one. We will have hopefully some available in training post if need be. Um, kiddos and families are signed into the group for the day. Yes, we, so we will. So that's the other thing too. If you're a single family coming, you will not be alone for the day. We're breaking the whole participant group up to 200 and some people into six different program groups. And those program groups will also be camping together. We prioritize putting people in the same units together. So if you and another family or two are coming the same weekend from your same pack, you'll be in the same group, in the same campsite, unless you're a super pack, God, boom, who brings more people than we can accommodate. We may have to work with your leadership to split you guys up for that weekend, but you will be with someone that you know, and you will not be alone. Um, if you don't know anyone, you'll be with another group. Um, our shirt colors, I uh, can't remember what we chose. Yep. So it's a surprise. Uh, just a That's follow up right. on the bug spray. The reason why we say no aerosol is that it could damage the tents. Um, mm -hmm. And also as uh, older scouts tend to use that with flame. Let's leave it at that. Um, I think the the other question. Let's see. Hmm. I, I tried running through as fast as I could. 
Yeah, I think that's about all the questions we have. We do have 40 people in here, including a gentleman or, or a participant who uh, joined us like five minutes ago. I have to guess that's probably one of our Michigan uh, people not realizing we didn't put that. That's our bad. And we do apologize to anyone here from a different time zone that we did not put explicitly Central Standard Time. Scott and Sean, remember, we have about a third of our people from Michigan start putting Central on all our timestamps. Um, Kevin, you can dock my pay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll add it to mine, right? So, Elliot, yeah. your question about BSA volunteer about flag ceremony. So, on Friday evening, our youth staff take the flag down, and then they'll put the flag up on Saturday morning. On Saturday evening, we'll get all of, like the wee blows, and if we don't have enough wee blows, some bears, ALLs, whatever, to come take the flag down. And then next morning, any of the older scouts who've had who have not had a chance to do it will be able to put the flag up on Sunday morning. And that's something that you need to sign up for. It's just part of part of the program. So yeah, the QR code's back up. Um, if there's, there's a lot of first time people, hopefully that this will serve for them either later or today to help alleviate any of the apprehension or fears to come. Um, we have a wonderful program and a wonderful place to put on for you for the weekend. Um, part of it is having the right attitude. We tell our staff it makes a big difference. There could be some challenges throughout the day. It could be a warm day. It could be a cold day. We Keep in mind, we can't control the weather, so be prepared. Um, we will have water at every station. The water is well-tested and certified. It's the only well water I will drink. I have a grandmother who has been out in a lake in well water since I was five. I refuse to drink her water, but I actually do drink the best one. It is good for you. It will not be bad, but you're welcome to bring <laughs> water. We said water bottles. We'll give you guys cups. Like I said, once again, we'll have something at every station. Um, we do want to make sure that you guys are safe and hydrated. Other than that. If you ever complained about the weather, talk to Sean. <laughs> hey. <laughs> But we, we, I will guarantee you that it might rain. It'll probably be sunny, but you'll have fun. Last year, we had a rain out for our fire bowl. We had to do it indoors. Yeah, it was different. It was cool to be inside Thunderbird and do it. Not that cool to not have the forest and the campfires, but we still had a lot of fun. That was the loudest I've ever heard our kids <laughs> Because, you know, it was vibrating up the walls. However, still had a lot of fun. Yeah. This program is rain or shine. So, unfortunately, if I've had one group I sweet talked all year to the unit commissioner to come up and register, and they texted me on Friday night or Friday afternoon saying, it's raining this weekend. What about my refund? The answer is new. No. We are rain or shine. We will make sure that you guys are safe and appropriate. Uh, Mr. Lenny knows all too well about lightning and other things at Waterfront. We have alternates available and other plans, uh, but we are rain or shine for the weekend. Now, we are past our 30 days for some of the cutoff. There is a policy on refunding or cancellations if need be. Uh, we do appreciate letting us know because it does make a difference when we plan for our weekend supplies and food and et cetera, and also to know if you're going to be coming up um, a little later or not so a no show no call is a little rougher but so if we guys if something's happening please let us know like i said we'll do our best to accommodate but uh i think at this point in time someone else is trying to jump in the waiting room <laughs> um is there any questions for those who join later like i said this will be videoed and, and and saved and loaded and will be distributed at least by monday um in our weekly email leading up to camp also, if you're looking for any other updates about the camp, you can go to our family camp group page um, on Facebook. 
Family Camp 2024. You can join that group. We have um, updates on there throughout the week about camp, what is going on. We have some fun stuff about the history of the camp with our patches over the last 40 years, some spy information coming up. And then when camp starts, we're going to be asking you um, if you take photos of the camp, you can post them through that group page as well so everyone can see all the fun and excitement that's going on at Camp Vets. Oh, how did that become a meeting? The, the chat to just one person. So sorry, Elliot. Um, I did post in the uh, chat the link to the Facebook group. We also do have a bets page, which is general camp, which is more. We do offer off-season rentals and other programs and activities at bets as well. But between our Facebook group for family camp and our Facebook page for the physical camp, we also post a lot of these updates. Um, as well. So any information is, uh, we try getting to you different ways, email or other. Yep. And one last thing, and then we can kind of wrap it up. We're going to ask you to put photos on Facebook. Well, how am I going to do that in the woods in Michigan? Well, folks, would you believe it? But we have working Wi Fi. Don't jinx us. <laughs> but we do have working, yes, Chicago time, correct, not Michigan. We are a central time camp. All right. Thank you for the Wi-Fi. You're welcome. We will we will blame Sean and we will give Sean credit for the Wi-Fi. Working is exaggeration. A little bit. Sometimes. <laughs> it's very good. Well, AT it does depends if the uh, camp master or properties guy is actually like cut the line or not. I'm not <laughs> saying that happened, but it happened. <sighs> well, all right, folks. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Again, if you have any more questions, please feel free. So give us an email, shoot us an email. We're happy to hear what your questions are and answer it. Um, we're here for you. We're here to help you and your family and your scout make amazing memories this summer at Family Camp. And we can't wait to see you at Camp Bets. So thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>